فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to his beloved wife Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala adha wa ad abiha may Allah be pleased with her and her father that the Prophet recited alayhi salatu wa salam he recited qawluhu ta'ala the statement of Allah فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ and those whose hearts are sick and deviated فَيَتَّبِعُونَ they will follow مَا تَشَابَهُ they will follow the ambiguous verses. They will follow verses that are unclear. In the Quran, some verses are unclear, meaning it can take more than one interpretation. So when a person's heart is ill, that's what they do. They don't see the ayat which are clear cut, muhkam. They only take the ayat which are mutashabih. Allah says, fi qulubihim zigh. The only reason they will, they will do that is because there are deviations in their hearts. The reason they will do that is to bring about trials and tribulations. They want to call balbala. They want to cause instability. They want to cause confusion amongst the mass. So what they will do is they will bring those verses out in the open. And they will quote them to the people. And they will leave of all of the other evidences that are here to clarify what that means. This is something we were already told. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us. There are some people who are like that when it comes to dealing with people as well. That the person's mistakes, statements which he has said that are ambiguous are not clear. You will leave it and turn around from it. So you stick to that. So you hold on to those ambiguous speeches of his. And you turn away from all of the speeches which he said which are clear cut. Clear cut. <coughs> Why are they doing that? Ibtira al fitna wa ibtira al they want to actually misinterpret Islam or misinterpret the Muslims or even misinterpret the people upon the correct methodology and the correct path. That's what their goal is. So they will use those ayats to misinterpret it. The Prophet said to Aisha, who is no woman we know greater than her and none of us are like her. We're nothing close to our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. No in knowledge or of virtue. And the Prophet said to her, Aisha, if you see those people, you jadiluna fi ayatillah who are going to debate with you regarding those verses. They're the ones who Allah has named. They're the ones who Allah is talking about. فَحَذَرُوهُمْ Be cautious of them. Distance yourself from them. Don't entertain them. Just keep it moving. فَحَذَرُوهُمْ Be cautious of them, Aisha. مَا عِلْمِهَا Aisha's knowledge was vast. The Prophet didn't say, تَقُوهَا Tackle them. The reason why, when they are coming to you, they're not coming to you on that mindset of wanting to take the truth. They're coming to you with a preconceived notion. They just have to prove their point. That's all it is. They're not coming with giving victory to the truth. They're coming here to support batil and falsehood in any way, sneaky and tricky methods which they can take in order to what? In order to bring about confusion. And that's all they want. So from those points that I mentioned, there's benefits or there's points that we can take. There are points that we can take. First thing we can take from those, all those nusus that we mentioned is that the debate, the first point is that the jidal mahmud muraqabun fihi. The debate which is praiseworthy. It's highly recommended for somebody to study and learn it and come with it. And yes, without a doubt, تَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ ثَمَرَاتٌ طَيِّبَةٌ beautiful and great fruits and things will come out from that kind of debate and that dialogue. The second one which is Jidalum ba Jidal which is debate which is Batil Badmoon. It is null and void, it is falsehood and is blameworthy. So how would we know which one in details? You've given us an overview. So what I'll say to you is knowing the distinguish distinguishing fact between each one in precise details is basically by knowing the dawabit which is sahih principles and foundations which are correct which will show you inshallah ta'ala what type of debate is correct and what type of debate isn't and that inshallah ta'ala we're going to be doing in today's session inshallah ta'ala principles that you can leave with and you can learn 
what are the fawaid, the benefits that one can reap, that an individual can take from? The munadharat, the debates which are good, that are correctly done. The first is that إِحْقَاقُ الْحَقِّ وَإِبْرَازُهُ لِيَعْرِفَهُ الدَّاسُ وَيَنْقَادُوا إِلَيْهِ The first one is, you will actually break out in the open and make apparent the truth so the people are aware of it and so that the people are able to surrender and to give in to the truth. And as you all know, there are many ways that the truth can be brought out in the open. فَمِنْ طَرَائِقِ إِظْهَارِ الصَّوَابِ الْمُجَادَلَاتُ وَالْمُنَاظَرَاتُ الَّتِي تَكُونُ بِحَقٍ And one of the ways in which a person can make the truth become apparent to the people and the truth to become clear to the people so they can submit and follow it is by debating and arguing but بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٍ The second is, the second benefit that he has is كَشْفُ الْأَقْوَالِ الْبَاطِلَةِ وَتَعْرِيفُ الدَّاسِ بِبُطْلَانِهَا it, it also brings out in the open and it unveils the false speeches that are out there. And it also defines for the people, and it also clarifies for the people the falsehood that are in that speeches and in that, in that statement. Through debate it becomes clear to the people. So they learn the truth and they also, the second one was, they learn the falsehood that's there. And they don't only just learn it, but they learn it, why is it false? How is it wrong? How is it opposing the truth? As the poet said, عَرَفْتُ الشَّرَّ لَا لِلشَّرِّ وَلَكِنْ لِتَوَقِّيهِ وَلَمْ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفِ الْخَيْرَ مِنَ الشَّرِّ وَقَعَ فِيهِ I came to know the evil. I came to know the falsehood, the evil, not because it's evil, but to stay away from it. Tawaqih means to stay away from something. And to abstain from, that's why I learned it. And anyone who doesn't learn the evil from the good, he will fall into it. If you don't learn evil from good, you will fall into it. Hudayfa said, رضي الله تعالى عنه he said كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني then the people used to ask the Prophet عليه وسلم about the good they would come and they would ask good things and he said I would come on the other hand and I would ask the evil the reason he would do that is so he can stay away from it so through debates, this goal is also attained and it's also achieved. That the people start to know that this is false. And simultaneously, they are also learning at the point that this falsehood that's just come out of this individual, not only are they learning it's falsehood, but they're also learning why is it a false and where is the falsehood lying in? And where is the problem coming from? The third is Tamhisu fil adilla. Debates they bring about distinguishing between the evidences. You basically distinguish between what's authentic and what's falsehood. And so through that what we come to know is that that munadharat which are sahiha, debates which are correctly done, they are a type from the types of da'wah to ilallah ta'ala. It's a type of da'wah to ilallah ta'ala. ولذلك الإمام أبي بعالي الجويني رحمه الله في الكتاب الكافية هي سيز إن المناظرات من آكد الواجبات that debating and argument is actually from the most emphasized obligatory he says it's from it the reason why he's saying that is because it's from the wajibat sorry it's because it's from the الدعوة إلى الله because it's from calling to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and calling to Allah is something that needs to be done it has to be done The fourth thing that it brings about is, in these debates, تثبيت للمؤمنين على التمسك بحكام دينهم It brings the Muslims in that debate to actually become firm on holding on to their religion and be very adamant 
and it makes people solidified and, and, and realize okay and they become proud to be Muslims again especially at times when other, other people and other groups are out there shouting out to misguide the people and no one's responded to them for a long time when they do get responded to and they become confused and in the debate the people what they will do is they will be proud of holding on to this manhaj how clear it is it makes sense for them so it brings about tathbeet istiqama uprightness steadfastness debates spring and this is something allah commanded us فاستقم كما أمرت ومن تاب معك ولا تطغوا إنه بما تعملون بصير Allah tells us in this verse فاستقم be steadfast and upright also another, in another ayah Allah says إن الذين, استق... إن... آه... إن الذين استقاموا لربهم وأقاموا الصلاة those who have become steadfast so this is a characteristic that emerges when a debate is done correctly and it's a munadharat sahiha, debates which are good, correctly done. It brings about that characteristics that a lot of people may have not found in themselves for a long, long time. It comes about. It does. The fifth benefit that it brings is What you do is Sad al Mu'tadeen. The people who are transgressing and exceeding their limits, they become a bit worried now. They don't really think that they can exercise their transgression as they used to. Once they get silenced and once they become lost of words, what happens is that they become silent and they don't anymore want to bring themselves out forward anymore. And once they do become silent and they stop talking, what does it allow? It allows the truth and the haq to spread. And the people of the truth to actually educate the people. Number six is, debates bring about It actually cleanses the mind. It's one of the ways to sharpen the people's way of thinking now. Psychologically, debate is what makes people, his mind, their brain, and their rationality and their way of thinking, it sharpens it. And it also cleanses it. Sometimes your thinking becomes crooked. But in Debates that are correctly done when the muladhar is sahiha, it brings to you the right way of how to debate. It brings about for you the correct method of how how to debate. To debate. What it also brings is debates that are correctly done. It brings about certainty. You even the debater who is debating, it gives you certainty of what you were studying and you were learning it becomes certainty for you now that you're now certain about these principles and these points it solidifies it in your head and you realize that this is truly as it should be it brings about certainty so those are some fawaid in which we take from and we read from a debate that's correctly done what about studying the science? What are the fruits that we get from it? Study and opening our minds to study ilm al-jadal. What is it that we get from it? The first of course is that we will know the paths of debates which are good and debates which are bad. Okay? The distinguishing factor between the two. Okay? When is our debate correct? When is it justified Islamically? When is it permissible? When are we debating correctly? And when is our debate actually what? And when is our debate incorrect, that is false, it shouldn't be taking place. The second 
benefit that it brings about studying this science is that by studying this science you are pleasing your Lord by learning this art this knowledge and this science is actually you're pleasing your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's because through the science we're actually attaining through it the certainty which is what's requested from us and it is also a wasila bin al wasail which we're going to use to call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third benefit it is by studying this science we will be able بتعلم علم الجدل نتمكن من التأدب بالآداب الشرعية المتعلقة بالمناظرات والمجادلات By studying this science, you will be able to solidify in yourself the manners and the etiquettes that are required from you when you're debating. You will know when, it, when you're wrong now and why you went wrong. You will also learn with your this science when is it that you have to stop and let the person finish their point? And when is it that you should interject and speak? This is a science that will teach you all of that. So your debate, your, your manners of debating and your, the way you're going to debate is all going to be in accordance to the adab of the sharia. Because as we said, we're taking it all directly from what? The kitab was sunnah. We're taking it from the kitab and the sunnah. So our debate is not just as we wish and as, as we want. The fourth is, by studying ilm al-jadal, a person will be able to, to reach the results that they are looking for, the correct results more like. The goal that we want to attain, the truth which we want to bring out, by studying this science we'll be able to reach that result. Also, the fifth is that by studying this science, even if you don't go out and you don't debate, even if you don't go out and debate, but by studying this science, if you hear two, two people debating, you know whose debating is based upon al hujjah al sahiha correct evidences. And the person whose debate is all based upon what? al tabwihat al kadiba Just falsehood. That all he uses is lying and he's using tactics that's all he's using but he has no substantial he does not have concrete points he doesn't have anything through that three sides you'll know you and your brothers who's bringing something forward are you there whereas the abba to nas the general mass for them it's just basically who's who's speaking good is more eloquent and whatnot for them that's how they determine what's right or wrong but by you studying this science when two people are talking, you will look at everything in, a, in the light of the science that you just studied. So when you watch a debate, it will stick out for you. And inshallah, you all see through this uh, study a lot of what I'm saying, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> the sixth, which is, by studying this science, a person would have the ability in debating. You would have, you'd be very talented in debating and you will be very strong in bringing back matters to its evidences especially at these times where social media has become high internet and etc TV channels radios and stuff you will randomly get caught off guard you never know where you're standing you don't know when you're ever going to go into a path where you can see an a atheist talking to a Muslim sister, for instance, or a Christian talking to a Muslim brother, trying to give him da'wah, and you see this brother doesn't have much knowledge, where you would have to probably interject and get hold of the situation to get this Muslim brother away from the situation, or etc. And that would have to be by you debating and discussing and having a dialogue with this individual. And you just never know how it could be recorded. So by studying this science, a time when social media is all on us and you're a person who studies this science he's always on his guard he knows how to get matters back to the evidences 
and bring it back correctly to how it should be. <coughs> so this science is very important. We're at a time where people won't just take something because you said it. We're at a time where people are actually saying to you, well, what's your evidence? And they just want to have a discussion with you. The seventh is, <coughs> a lot of the people of falsehood today, atheists, agnostics, Christians, and etc. What they've done is, they've taken a lot of people with them. And they've, they've misguided many people. And got them away from the truth. So at a time like that, when you see this taking place, the importance and the benefits of studying this science increases even more. Because they're not doing it necessarily with force. They're not beating these people to the pole. Nor are they physically harming them. They're using tactics that they studied. They're using methods here and there. And so what the Ummah and the people are in need of, a person who can come and study Qawaneel al-Wujadal, and Qawa'iduhu wa adabu, somebody who has studied the art of debating and its principles and how it's used and when is it correct for you to use this and when is it correct for you to not use that and the khasm you're debating with what method has he just used has he used a method knows al inqita meaning he's jumping which we'll see inshallah ta'ala is the method that you use called ilzam where he can't get out of it and those methods you know what's happening it's just not evidence is being thrown at each other it's actually a step-by-step -step progress of discussion that's going on that the person would know to use. <coughs> the eighth, so this is why it's important, brothers. The eighth is by studying Ilm al-Jadal is actually something that today has brought some people back to studying the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you're going to come with a jidal which is sahiha, it has actually made some people think, to know and understand that they need to come back and study their deen. So they've come and they start and they open books. They started from the Arabic language, from basics. And they've made their ways up. They studied the aqidah books from beginning and they made their way up. Because what we're going to see later is the usul and the foundations that debate stand on. The art and the tactics doesn't necessarily mean you have content. Are you with me, brothers? You can have the, uh, the tactics of debating. and You know how to sway speeches and you know how to confuse a person in a discussion or you know how to go back to front. Or, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that debate is munadara sahiha, shara'an. No, it's not. There's an usul it stands on. One of his usul is that you have evidences, you have proofs. Some people, they're so eloquent and they're so silver-tongued, as they say, that they are able to go into a discussion and not bring any proof, but make the other person who's bringing so much evidences look what? Look as though that they're the one who is weak and they walk away from the debate. Now, this is the art that they've studied of. This is the way that they can prove their points and they can... But that doesn't necessarily mean that they were right. and doesn't mean that the munadhar was sahihah. So if you want your... So if, you, so if you want to have a debate which is authentic and is correct, there are many factors that have to be in place. Naam, the ability of articulating your point and being able to, be, to speak in a particular fashion and a particular way, that's something we're going to study. But also, you are not able to leave the two most powerful points which are Mustalah al-Hadith, authentication of narrations and al-Hadith, and al-Usul al-Fiqh, which is how you're going to extract evidence from these from these adilla, these. Um, now that we've spoken about and we've categorized, and we spoke about what do you call it, the benefits that we can take from studying ilmul jadal, we're now going to bring, inshallah ta'ala, some speeches of scholars who've spoken about this issue of al jadal, some things that they have said, of how important it is. Abu Muhammad ibn al-Jawzi, who is the son of the great scholar ibn al-Jawzi, okay? He's the son of ibn al-Jawzi, 
He said in his book al Idah, he said, I'lam wa faqanillahu wa iyaka. Know may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you tawfiq, the ability to, to comprehend and the ability to do good. Wa iyaka anna ma'rifata hadha al-ilmi ilm al-jadali. That knowing and understanding this science, which is ilm al-jadali, la yastaghni anha nadirun. A person who's looking at the textual evidences, a person who is a thinker, a person who is a scholar, he is not able to ever stay without it. You can't. You need Ilm al-Jadal. And he says, وَلَا يَتَمَاشَى بِدُونِهَا كَلَامُ مُنَاظِرٍ And a person who's debating, his debate will not move forward and it won't progress and it won't take place correctly if he hasn't taken on board the science. Abu Sulaiman al-Baji rahimahullah the great Maliki scholar, he says, This knowledge, which is Ilm al-Jadal, he says it's min arfa'il ulumi qadran wa'adhamiha sha'na. Lianahu al-sabiru ila ma'rifati al-istillal wa tamiyiz al-haqqi min al-muhal wa lawla tasheeh al-wad'i bil-jadal laba qamat hujjatun wa la tadahat mahajjatun wa la ulima al-sahih min al-saqimi he says Abu Sulaiman al-Baji rahimahullah this knowledge which is Ilm al-Jadal is from the greatest highest sciences in terms of its weight it's from those وَعَظَمِهَا شَأْنًا and its affairs is very highly ranked and highly placed why? لِأَنَّهُ السَّبِيلُ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ الْإِسْتِلَّانِ because it is the path to knowing how to use evidences وَتَمِيزِ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الْمُحَالِ and it is also to distinguish between what is true from what is from the impossible. And if it wasn't for debating and argumentation, then proofs would not have been established and things would not have become clear to people. And the correct thing, something correct, would not have become clear from that which isn't correct. وَلَلْمُعُوَجُّ مِنَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And that which is crooked from what, that which is straight. All of that became clear through what? Through debating. Ibn Aqil al-Hanbali rahimahullah in his kitab al-Jadal he says لِلْجَدَلِ شُرُوطٌ وَأَدَابٌ إِنْ اسْتَعْمَلَهَا الْخَصْمُ وَصَلَ إِلَى الْإِلَى بُغْيَتِهِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَعْمَلَهَا كَثُرَ غَلَطُهُ وَاضْطَرَبَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُهُ He says Jadal has conditions, prerequisites that you need to come with first. And it has manners and etiquette in which you need to observe. And if the person uses that, he said, If the opponent uses that, or you use that, you're going to attain what you're looking for. Bughiya means what you're looking for. You're going to reach your goal. <coughs> and if the person does not use it, your mistakes will be too much. And his matter becomes, it becomes confused onto him. The person becomes confused. Lost of words in the middle of the debate. He doesn't know how to move forward now. And if he knows how to debate, sometimes, even if it's a point that he doesn't know, he's able to what? He's able to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't get... Because in a debate, sometimes, a point that you go wrong on can actually be a very small mistake in the debate. But if your opponent is very well versed into debating and the art of debating, they can basically magnify this mistake and make it look bigger than what it really is. And if you know how to debate very well, you're able to make this look as small as it should be and move away from it swiftly. This is something that will bring about, or the art of debate brings about. Something similar to that, Al Imam ibn Khaldun said in his Muqaddimah. And Khatib al Baghdadi, rahimahullah, the great scholar of hadith in his book Al-Faqih wa Al-Mutafaqih he says something which we should read he says he said tadammana kitabu Allah dhamma al-jidali the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it consists of it or in it is rebuking a scolding debating wa tadammana al-amra bil-jidali and it also commanded to debate so in the Quran part of it is actually speaking against debating and it's rebuking debating and it's against debating and parts of the Quran is actually what? 
and parts of the Quran is actually uh, urging you to debate, commanding you to debate. And then he says, فَعَلِمْنَا يَقِينًا أَنَّ الَّذِي ذَمَّهُ غَيْرُ الَّذِي أَمَرَ بِهِ As he said, by this we will know, out of certainty, we will know by certainty that what Allah has rebuked is not what he commanded. وَأَنَّ مِنَ الْجِدَالِ مَا هُوَ مَحْمُودٌ مَأْمُورٌ بِهِ So from within the debate, there are debates which are praiseworthy and he commanded. وَمِنْهُ مَا هُوَ مَذْمُومٌ مَنْهِيٌ عَنْهُ And there are debates which are blameworthy and they are prohibited. فَطَلَبْنَا الْبَيَانَ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرَيْنِ And he goes on speaking about the different types of debates there are and what they are. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, whose book we're going to be speaking about later, which is called Tanbihu al-Rajul al-Aqil ala Tamwih al-Jadal al-Batil, which we'll speak about and why he authored that book. He says, وَأَمَّا جِنْسُ الْمُنَاظَرَةِ وَالنَّظَرِ فَهَذَا لَمْ يَنْهَ السَّلَفُ عَنْهُ Pay attention. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, as for debating in and within itself, jinsu munadara, the essence of debating, you see, فَهَذَا لَمْ يَنْهَ السَّلَفُ عَنْهُ The Salaf did not prohibit that one. So when you read the books of like, for instance, Usul al-Sunnah written by Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, in which he says that the usul we hold onto is the, and the foundation that we're upon is التمسك بما كان عليه أصحاب رسول الله that we hold on to that which the companions were upon and that we don't debate. The debating here that they're talking about, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah is telling you it's not the essence of debating itself. It's the type of debate though that is done based on falsehood. The debate which is based upon falsehood. As for the debate which is haq, Salaf wa hadhi al-Ummah, they themselves exercised. Ahmed rahimahullah himself debated. It's actually present. His debate, rahimahullah, in his kitab, uh, and his debates are present in how he debated with the deviated Mu'tazili of his time, the deviated group, the Mu'tazila. So this shows us that the benefits on what the scholars have actually said about it, debating. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah is from the A'immah who we say that he understood Madhab al-Salaf, the methodology of the Salaf very well because of his itila and his reading and his, his understanding. So we'll take a break inshaAllah ta'ala, we'll take a 15 minutes break and we'll go on to speaking about Tariq al-Ilm al-Jadal, the history and how it came about. So this, as I said, is going to be all fully based on having an understanding and introduction of Ilm al-Jadal. So 15 minutes inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, if you guys can come back by 9 o'clock, we'll carry on from where we left off.